What's going on guys, it's Colin here for Next Gen Tactics and today I'm bringing you a quick game of Rush on Isla Innocentes and I'm using the engineer kit, I'm running with the 9A91 Optima, which is actually the first gun you get when you uh, when you first start the game so I figured I'd uh, bust this out and have a bit of fun with it and uh, yeah, I was pretty impressed. Now I am running Magnum Ammo on this although when you first pick it up obviously you're not going to have that option but I try and run my favorite route and, and something just bizarre happens. There's a, an enemy in and among my teammates and I can't pick them out and I get shot so uh, we get pushed back and uh, have to come in in the chopper so anyway it takes a little while for this game to get going for me but in the end it turns out pretty good and uh, what I wanted to do was first quickly talk about uh, a couple of my previous videos where I was talking a little bit about uh, kill streaks and that was a game of uh, rush attack on Atacama Desert and what I was trying to do is basically talk about the evolution of kill streaks and score chains and those types of rewards in previous titles uh, recent titles like Homefront, Medal of and that sort of thing and uh, there's something similar also in in crisis and I didn't mention crisis and how they have actually implemented a system where you have to go up and pick up dog tags in order for the kill to count towards your streak which I think is also pretty cool because uh, that's gonna promote people you know to move around as opposed to sitting back and camping although I guess that there is uh, a module or a perk you can use later on that allows you to automatically collect them so hopefully that doesn't become game breaking once people unlocked it and I still just haven't had the time to sit down and and give crisis 2 a good honest go right here's an example of, of the fact that I do listen to you guys <laughs> somebody had mentioned in a comment that uh, I don't throw grenades at armed MCOM stations enough and you're absolutely right so I've tried to take it upon myself to do that a little bit more and right there I actually get a kill for my efforts so anyway uh, back to what I was saying about kill streaks and uh, I didn't maybe perhaps state my opinion strongly enough and when it comes to Battlefield 3 I hope that there are absolutely no kill streaks or rewards of any kind in the game I uh, I think that most folks who are fans of the Battlefield franchise agree that it's fine without it and uh, I agree with that I don't want to see anything in the game but um, I guess what I was getting at was if <laughs> if DICE if the developers do decide to put something in the game in order to appeal to a broader audience I do hope that those rewards or kill streaks or whatever they would happen to be are not game breaking Breaking, not overpowered um, ideally there's nothing at all but you know I do hope that they're not lethal or anything like that so uh, that's basically what I was getting at I probably didn't state that opinion clearly enough and, and there was quite a bit of dialogue on that video and uh, I, I'm sure some of you understood what I was saying some didn't but uh, I wanted to clear that up right here now I haven't talked yet too much about strategy on Isla Innocentes and I actually did a playbook video on this over on the NGT Games channel some time ago so I'm going to put a link to that in the description if you want to see me talk more about tactics for Isla Innocentes <clears throat> but basically right there I was just waiting to make sure that I had at least a teammate on me before I pushed up and that's something that uh, when I'm playing with uh, with a group of guys that are actually talking you know, that's one thing that we always want to do is manage a presence inside the enemy base so that we don't get pushed back to our uh, to our deployment and and that's really important so if you don't do that and if you don't maintain a strong presence in the base then um, what you what you wind up doing is launching what uh, my buddy Jay Kaiser refers to as uh, a trickle attack right here I armed the station because I thought that my teammate had cleaned up the guy behind me but uh, he hadn't so unfortunately um, <laughs> I get taken down and I spawn back in on my teammate even though it's a pretty bad situation because I was hoping to, to kind of shoot my way out of there and maintain a presence in their base. So unfortunately we get pushed back and I have to come back in on a jet ski. So we're going to try and attack the left hand side now. We've We've bled some tickets here trying to get the alpha objective, which really isn't the objective you want to focus on because the building tends to collapse. You want to make sure you get B because when the defenders are able to collapse and focus all their attention on Bravo, this becomes a very, very difficult base to take. So we decide, uh, yeah, we'll push the left side. We'll try and uh, take down B and then we'll deal with alpha however we have to. So, I mean, if that means eventually firing some rockets at the building, we'll do that. And my goal actually in this game was to get the MCOM attacker pin and arm four MCOM stations. So you can see that... Uh, we're kind of screwing around on the squad, and, and uh, Crisis goes goes in and arms this one. And uh, for whatever reason, I sit there in awe that Crisis arm, armed an MCOM station. <laughs> uh, it's just an ongoing joke, inside joke, guys. Uh, just give the guy crap. But uh, here I try and toss a grenade. It, it hits the sandbag, and uh, anyway... So, yeah, I mean, if, if you don't maintain a strong presence in the base, then basically, uh, again, as Jay says, you, you 
you, you launch a trickle attack where one or two guys go in and maybe they even sneak in and get the MCOM station armed but uh, the defenders are just going to mow them down and disarm the station and, and it just goes back and forth so you want to make sure that uh, you have as many attackers as possible move forward and controlling the enemy base and pushing them back which is something that we did pretty well here and these guys weren't uh, it wasn't a terrible team that we were playing so I know that uh, this uh, doesn't look like it's that challenging so far but they really weren't that bad but uh, the mistake that they made on the second base and, and what they're making right here is that they're not pushing forward too much. They're not setting up a perimeter in front of the MCOM stations. Um, just a few of them here and there will uh, sort of meander forward and we're able to pick them off. So we've got them pushed back pretty good and, and I'm moving slowly and carefully, not running like a lunatic like I normally do because I see those two MCOM stations. I want that attacker pin and I need to get both of them in order to get it. So <laughs> I'm picking my moment and I'm, I'm going to try and go get them. So anyway, this was a pretty fun game game and I have uh, I have some other fun games I have one uh, a game of rush on Eureka Harbor that I got before this one but I haven't posted it yet just because I, I did a series of three videos on Eureka I figured I'd give it a break and uh, post some island Ascentes but I do have some uh, some rush on Eureka where everything doesn't go according to plan so I think I'll post that up uh, you know in the next few days just to talk about that and, and how we overcome it and uh, yeah, I have some uh, some decent deathmatch games also. So I'm still on the quest to level 50. I did reach uh, level 49 today. So had I actually combined my points from PS3 and Xbox 360, I'd be level 50 now. But uh, it's actually on my wish list that I, I keep tweeting to the uh, Battlefield 3 developers. Uh, give a system so that uh, people like me are going to wind up buying the game on two or three platforms. A way so that our experience point carry across platforms. Because... Well, uh, maybe some of you disagree with that, but it would be nice to be able to kind of work and rank up, and regardless of where I play, I, I am able to rank up. Now, on Xbox, you know, if you want to start a new account and start over, you have to pay, but on PS3 and on Steam, you don't have to do that. So, I mean, if I get bored once I rank up having played all three platforms, I can always start, like, a new PSN account or a new Steam account and do that, so... I did actually get Bravo. I come over here and arm Alpha, so if we manage to hold them here, then I'm going to get my attacker pin, which uh, I always seem to get robbed. I'll get like three armed or something like that, and then uh, back in the days of crate bashing, I, I used to happen a lot where I'd go arm a crate and then my teammates would just blow it up with C4 so I didn't get credit. So I'm trying to, uh, you know, just get lots of points and, uh, you know, point whore a little bit. <laughs> Holler at my teammates, let me arm it, I need the points, because there were a couple of uh, level 50s on my squad. But, uh, yeah, guys, if you haven't, uh, I basically totally overlooked the 9A91 when I first started playing. As soon as I unlocked new weapons, I went right to them, but uh, definitely check it out. It's a great gun, deals high damage, and you have to manage your ammo because it only has a 20-round magazine, but uh, fun gun to use. So expect a lot more gameplay with that, and I'm going to go and, and play around more with some shotguns for you guys, too. Anyway, that is it. Cheers. We'll talk soon. Hey guys, we now have our own website. Actually, we've always had our own website, but why not follow us on there? There you'll find all our videos conveniently sorted into playlists by game, as well as videos from many other directors that are part of our NGT network.